Hello, my spooky friends. This is John, your host, and welcome to another episode of Dareland Frights, the paranormal podcast that covers everything spooky, creepy, and mysterious in the Midwest. And tonight, I'm joined by my, like we talked about, she loves the co-host, and I love the co-host <laughs> with her, Erin from Patriot Paranormal. Hello, Erin. How Yay, are you? Everybody. Wonderful. How about you? I'm doing very well, thank you. Erin has been traveling around and everything, and she's getting yes. her studio, beautiful studio together. So, you know. Trying to. It, it's awesome. She's tr she's trying to, but we're, <laughs> she's getting her stuff together, and uh, we were excited always excited about co-hosting uh -huh. together so i was so excited that she came on tonight i had a guest unfortunately the guest got sick that happens yeah and, but that's okay uh i having Erin on always brightens my day you know i can't get a guest on. so we're good and i love coming yeah. on i'm so glad that you have me on yes <laughs> love to have you on and by the way, we got some emails I wanted to share with you saying they really enjoy us as co-hosts. They Aww. said you're very, that you're very funny. And I said, <laughs> yes, he's very funny. <laughs> and they said you asked really good questions of Melissa, who we co-hosted uh -huh. with yes. uh, from the uh, Phantom Detectives LLC. Um, they awesome. really liked your questions, they said. So there you go. Oh, okay. You got some good Yay. feedback. Yay. Thank yeah. you, everybody so who, who gave the feedback. You. I appreciate that. Yeah. And I try to be funny. Not always funny, but I try. <laughs> she tries her best songs. I know. Yeah, I try. Story, so. yeah, and then you hear, like, funny. crickets. Doo, doo, and I'm like, oh, I guess that wasn't funny. <laughs> I'll, I'm I'll just a natural media. goofball, but, <laughs> you know, with you, though, you and I are like, yeah, it just, like, comes totally naturally, so, you know. Yeah, it's peanut butter and jelly. That's what I like there to say. Go. Peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> That's right. I'm not sure who's peanut butter, though. Uh, <laughs> we'll work that out I'm later. probably jelly right now, I'll be honest. Look at that. Look at that. That's jelly right there. That's oh, some jelly. Oh, my God. Get out of here. By the way, Erin, if you go to her Instagram, and she'll post sometimes where she goes and works out and goes golfing and yeah. stuff. Yeah. Oh, it's amazing. I don't have the energy. I just, you're awesome. Uh, so I'm glad you do that. You no, know, yeah, John, I think my coach would disagree with you right now, but <laughs> I think he's like, uh, where are you? Like, what's happened? I'm like, I don't know. I turned 51, hit menopause, and my whole life melted but it's okay you know mm -hmm. I, I i am gonna get back to the gym i'm actually starting back tomorrow um, i'm not gonna be doing crossfit for about another month uh, mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. yeah because you know my shoulder and my knees and my back i mean mm -hmm. well my whole body is pretty much shot mm -hmm. So I'm gonna take, I've been taking a little break from CrossFit, but it is actually really good for you. And I actually feel better when I go, but I'm just going through this weird thing right now. And so I'm just starting very light weights tomorrow and kind of build my cardio back up. And then I'm going to be going back to CrossFit because I feel much healthier when I do. Yeah. Right. Wish me luck because yeah, I, I always will. post Wish videos of, of ones I've, I've started dying. It's never easy. It, hey, didn't no. say it was easy, Aaron. If it was easy, no. everybody would do it, right? That is true. That is true. Yeah. And you know, and I do. The, it's really weird because the older I get, like, sort of the more vain I get about. I don't. I don't. You know what I mean? I want to. I want to be fit, and yeah. not in a bad way. And I don't mean that in a bad way. It's just you know, you start realizing your, you know, just the the thinness of life and and yeah. then you're just like oh this is a little scary because i'm kind of i'm starting to get older and i'm yeah. friends are you know passing away and it's just like oh my mm -hmm. god and yeah, yeah so anyways i i gotta get back to it though because uh yeah i'm not happy when i'm not in motion you know right right and it's a good thing because it's good for your mental yeah. attitude it's good for your body yeah. 
it's good because you're getting off the couch and you know yeah trying to do something right yeah and and i tell you what when you when you get into that state and you get sucked into the couch it's really hard to get that momentum Mm -hmm. to get going again and so i i just you have to make a decision and i was like okay well just gonna take a little break but it's time to get back you know i i yeah, yeah i'm like for you're right for your mental health because it's is it can be debilitating. Yeah, you need to release all those endorsements, and I need my muscles back because that's gotten too yeah. slow. Yeah, come on now, we got a rubber band going. What's going on with that one? I uh, you know, like I could start a tsunami with that shit right there. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm joking, people. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. I shouldn't yeah. say that, but you know, you always, when you have one of those insecurities, you end up making jokes mm-hmm. about it, mm-hmm. you know? You and so that's, yeah. So I always turn that into a funny thing so that I can right. relax about it and not beat myself up mm-hmm. too hard. And so, right. yeah. Yeah. But and, anyways. And dark humor in, in mm-hmm. places, I think, is good. Because I yeah. think it takes away from some of the things that yes. in this world, like if you let it get to you, not that this is a mental health podcast, but we've turned into one here for a second. If it lets, yes. if it really lets it get to you, you would just curl mm-hmm. up in a ball and sit in the corner. You really yeah. let everything get to you. And sometimes you just got to have a laugh, uh, not at someone's expense, yeah. but, but just sure. that, like, Okay, <laughs> you know, yeah. my friend passed away. I'm losing all my friends or whatever. And you might make a lighthearted joke about it. Right. I'm sure if they're your right. friends, they would laugh at it too because they're like, yeah, you know, I'm a friend right. for a reason. Um, and, you know, it, it, to me, is just this life is too short. If you don't laugh at least once in yeah. a while, I, I kind of feel sorry yeah. for you. I really do. Because it's right. Like, it's not yeah. sorry in the way that you're a bad person. Sorry in that you're not just letting, you know, just a laugh, just to be like, oh yeah. my God, this life, what's next? Yeah. Right. And then yeah. you kind of laugh about it, right? Yeah. You're just like, right. Well, what you do have you? to. I mean, and, and the world is just so insane and crazy right now. And mm-hmm. just there's so many weird things going on that I'm like, I just have to take a step back and laugh because otherwise it, I think it's yeah. extremely traumatizing. <laughs> Yeah, like I said, it's like, what? Just a ball. oh my god, yeah. yeah, and you know, and so I do the same thing with myself. I, I try not to uh, be too harsh on myself, and I try to to make a few jokes because you know it can lead you down a dark path. And of course, we all want to try to avoid that because it's yeah, not a absolutely. fun place to be. Absolutely. Hopefully, other people that are listening to your podcast can relate because uh, you know people find different ways to externalize that. You know, yeah pressure inside of our heads or whatever you want to call it, you know, the mental health. And so at one time I used fitness as that, but I've slacked in that area and I don't, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. So, you know, I find other ways to do it, you know, like if I'm not working out, which I should be, which I'm going to be starting tomorrow, but if I'm not, then I try to find other ways like painting, for instance, I'm not very good at it, but I do enjoy it. My mom has taught me, she's extremely good at it. And so she's been teaching me. And so I've been using that lately, you know, to kind of release some of that, you know, craziness going on inside of my head. Yeah. Right. I'm like, we can't, energy. Yeah. We can't release all of it because the crazy, some yeah. of the crazy's got to be there, but you know, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I definitely hear you. Uh, and that's why we make a great team as co-hosts. Cause I think we appreciate each other and our dark humor and that yes. we can laugh about certain yeah. things. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. And I love how you share stuff with me. And I think that's really important as friends and, you know, and, and as, as people who have a lot of stuff in common, you know, it's nice that, that we can share stuff like this with each other and a not be too serious, but, but know that when stuff is serious, that we've got each other's backs, you know? Yeah. And so. Absolutely. And that is what everyone and to my spooky friends out there, that's what you mm. that you should have. At the end of the day, you need yeah. someone to be like, it's okay. Yeah. I'm here for you. I yeah. got your back. It, it's, yeah. you know, and if you do say something really stupid, you're at a party and you say something dumb or, or wherever you are and someone kind of looks at you yeah. like, hey, man, that wasn't cool. And you can be like, yeah, okay. I do that all well, the time. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, me. That's like... Take it or leave it, right? Yeah. You know. 
and, yeah, and, and, I'm and just I, like, and I think yeah. you you got to have people deal with that because yeah. if they're their two friends, they'll be like, okay, maybe you went. Maybe you went a little yeah. too far on that one. Yeah. And that's a friend telling you, right? You'd be like, yeah. eh, maybe you went a little too far on that one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Or maybe I did. Yeah. Uh, I and I, yeah, well, I'm an extremely awkward person, anyways. Like, I do really, <laughs> really awkward when I'm in yes, groups, you know? And I'm like, oh, you know, and I always say the dumbest so things. Bad. And I'm like, why did I that's say that? Bad. I have no idea. But I get really, I get very, I get anxiety, which, you know, a lot of people just cannot believe because I'm so Mm -hmm. outspoken and loud and Mm -hmm. gregarious, but they, and they're like, what do you mean you get anxiety? And I'm like, yeah, for real. I do not like crowds. You know, I don't like a lot of people. And so then I get weird and tongue tied and, and then I'm like, and I, and, and then I say the dumbest things and I'm just like, Okay. Yeah, yeah I, I gotta right. go. Been there. Yeah, I've been there, done that. Been there, done that. Uh, That's why, like, I love hanging out, like with you and, and my other podcast friends. It's just like it's natural yeah. to me. It's easy, yeah. and I don't get. Yeah. Not that I don't get nervous because I do, but yeah, I don't feel that nervous. anxiety as when I'm I'm with yeah, like right. a bunch of people, especially strangers. I'm just like, yeah, oh my yeah. god. And, and, yeah. and like I've said many times before, too. Aaron, you got to love yourself before you love somebody else. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I get Mm -hmm. it's cliche, but if you don't say, yeah, you know what? I am who I am. I'm going to say these things. People who truly care for me and my true friends are going to be like checking me when I get a little too crazy and just loving me when they just go, oh, you're a riot. You're just ridiculous right. sometimes, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's cool. Yeah. And then my, my, you know, my really close friends, like you guys, it's like, it's so funny because you guys are just like, oh, yeah, that's just yeah. Aaron, you know? She's, yeah, she's just Aaron. weird like that. Well, we and so, like, you know, when I'm around, like, my gym friends, for instance, you know, it's like, yeah, sure, sure. and I, because I'm, of course, the crazy conspiracy theorist, you know, and, um, uh-huh. but they all know that. And they don't care. And they're just like, oh, yeah, that's just Aaron, you know, because I'll say something totally off the wall. And they're, they're like, ooh, 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 Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. Yes, speaking yes, of, speaking yes. of that, conspiracies, well, okay. do, you have Net- do you have Netflix? Do you have Netflix? I do. I do. Okay. Have you watched the, I just started watching the conspiracy one, on the octopus, about this guy, yes. the journalist who was killed? Yes. Over all, the, all this crazy stuff with the government and how they were taking yeah. software mm-hmm. to spy mm-hmm. in all these countries and using all this information to win elections and to like, uh-huh. give some of their friends all the business dealings yep. and the spy on it. God, yeah. Holy yes. Shit. That I'm shit's all yet. real, I'm dude. Yet. Yeah, I, I'm not done yet, but I absolutely just go. I'm a conspiracy guy too, but some conspiracies I'm like, okay, let's everybody <laughs> right. slow down, right? You're like, slow right. down, there, you know. <laughs> but this one, which is real, and they have boxes mm-hmm. of evidence, and mm-hmm. you can sit yeah. there and be like, you want this? You want more? And you this evidence coming out of the yeah. out of your ear, and you yeah. go, man, that's crazy. How's that? How did nobody like say this is wrong? This has to stop. Yeah, and, and because I I have my theories. Yeah, it swept under the rug. Uh, yeah, but anyway, we will do we will do a show of conspiracy. We need one to. Of these we need to because we I know all about, about that. Fun. I know yeah, all I'm about I'm that, right. and I'm going to tell you what that right. is only the tip of the iceberg, my friend. The mm. tip of the iceberg. Mm. It goes so it much deeper than that. There's yep. a series that I started watching, and it's uh, yeah. extremely similar to that. Mm-hmm. And I, at the top of my head, I cannot think of the name, but I will get it for you because when we get when we do another podcast, and we should do one about yeah. this because it is that show okay. that you're talking about is insane, and that is only yeah. the tip of the iceberg. I mean that that mm-hmm. only gets going. How deep and dark and insane 
this really is. There were so many things that they did during the Obama administration that like our privacy um, started the propaganda machine rolling, started taking our information. I mean, we're only just getting mm-hmm. started as far as I'm covering that. Yeah, yeah. Um, like with right. the whole thing that just happened with everybody's social security cards getting leaked or whatever. I'm yeah. like, what? Who cares? They, they've known all of our information all along anyways. I mean, everybody's freaking yeah. out. I'm like, dude, they know everything they need to know about you. Trust me on that. Okay. Because the, mm-hmm. yeah. I'm like, we don't have any privacy anymore. Anyways, we can snowball with this. But there is a show I want you to watch. If you like that and your listeners like that, I will get the name of it. And so next time we get on, I will tell you. Because, my God, that is even more informational than the octopus thing. It is insane. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah, you're in my domain now. Like, this is my thing. I love it. I love conspiracies. I love... Not the fake crap. I don't care. I'm yeah, talking the about the real crap. deal that affects yeah. all of us, that really puts yeah. us as a country and as an individual in, in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. And so we, yeah. you know, we really, yeah, it's it's frightening. And and this is one yeah. of those things yeah. that we were talking about a minute ago where I, 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 I have to do stuff to keep out of my head because it just, yeah, my, right? it's mind blowing. It's mind blowing, Absolutely. and this is why I love Absolutely. chasing ghosts <laughs> because I'm like, yeah, right, 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 right. right. Yes. So, speaking of chasing ghosts, let's get let's yes. get into the show. Um, uh, one thing I wanted to share with you: we we're talking about this offline that I found this week, kind of a little bit of news. A uh, little <laughs> news here is, uh, so this director, the famous director, he is filming Frankenstein adaptation right now in Scotland. And oh, his name okay. is Guillermo de Toro. And yes. why he's yes. in his room. So if you don't know who he is, he's done like Crimson Peak. He's done like Shape of Water, which won a bunch of Oscars. Mm-hmm. He's done, mm-hmm. uh, I can't think of the other he's movies. Done a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, he's done but a he's lot. But he's an of actor stuff. too, right? Yeah. He's an actor, yeah. right? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, excuse me. Sorry, have... y'all. Yeah. There's yeah, something yeah. about every so, time I get on screen that my nose starts running and yeah, <laughs> I know. Uh, so anyway, he was in Aberdeen in a haunted room in this eighteen wow this, this old eighteen hundreds hotel, and he was on Twitter. You can go check it out. Even if you don't like right. Twitter, you know, just go check it out. Um, I'll All put right. the link in the in this episode and i threw the link up on my socials too so he was just in this uh, haunted room and everything and he uh, decided that uh, well maybe something's going on with the electrical or something like that but he said he mm-hmm. had this supernatural entity which was super angry and and he was like there's something wrong here. He even he even said there there felt like it was angry and territorial. So you're a paranormal investigator if you've ever mm-hmm. uh, Aaron found this to be true, and a shred of rage. And what yeah. he did was that was absolutely so he tried to do his own investigation, which I think is absolutely hilarious. But he tried. Right. He took out his phone, his iPhone. And he tried to get an EVP on it. He tried to ask some questions of the right. and everything. Uh, but he said, you know, he didn't really get anything. Um, nothing mm. really happened to him per se. But he just felt like there is something wrong here. And wow. I didn't know this either about him. He, every time he goes to a location, he finds mm-hmm. a haunted location, a haunted hotel, something wow. like that and he stays in the most haunted room which i think is i didn't know that about this guy that he was so yeah. so, i yeah, didn't know that either he goes to film, uh like he's he filmed in toronto and the first thing he'll do is look for the haunted hotel right like he'll ask people like where's the haunted hotel yeah. and where's the haunted room and then he'll book it and then so <laughs> i just like that's okay he's you know, a big time movie yeah. director, Hollywood movie director, he can do that's that. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, this is what this guy does. He loves the paranormal. That's Absolutely so. That's crazy. It. 
Okay, Guermo, am I saying your name right? Guermo, if you're out there, you're, you're hearing me. Mr. Del Toro, if you would like to go investigate it, I would love to do that. Thank you. However, I will not stay in a hotel room, so you're on your own there, buddy, because I can't, I want to talk to this guy now, because I want to know why, why do you want to stay there? Like, do you just want to stay up and chat? Do you want to get evidence, you know, like, and how do you sleep? I want to know yeah. this, because we yeah, go to locations, right? and we stay yeah. overnight. Now, ask right. Laura and Eric how much sleep we actually get, because... No. Uh -huh. So I went yeah. and slept when we went to Malvern Manor. Okay. Mm -hmm. And of course, Josh is like, oh, yeah, you guys can, you know, sleep in there or whatever if you want to get some sleep. And I'm like, sure, Josh. Okay. Yeah, that's going to happen. <laughs> no. Mm -hmm. So Laura and Eric were got on the couches and they're laying there and they're like, yeah, we're going to try to get some sleep. And I was like, well, good luck with that. I'm going to my car. So I went out and got in my car and like crawled up in the back and like for 30 minutes got enough sleep that I could drive home safely. But I was like, there's no way. So I want to know, Mr. Del Toro, how do you sleep in these places? Yeah, right. Or do you? Do you not? Do you just stay awake and try to get evidence? That's, I love that, though. I think, you know, yeah. that's pretty brave. Yeah, he says I, that. No. He said to uh, Aaron that some of his uh, crew and producers um that they left the hotel after the first night they just said there's something in here <laughs> yeah. like, like you slept in their car well i didn't know if they slept in their car but they left and stayed right. in the so, like, he, was stood there. he was like yeah but he was just like whatever i'm gonna he stay. Pays to do that that's insane that's funny because i i, don't know. I, don't know. I have questions i have questions where am i, I he said he's going to... Yeah, post. that's kind of scary. He said he will... says, stay tuned. If anything happens, I will <laughs> report. That's <laughs> that's awesome. I mean, I love that, to be honest, because I, I mean, I think that's great. That's great, because yeah. I admire people who can do that, because I just... Yeah. I can't. I'm, I'm a wimp. I'm sorry. Yeah. I love going I to mean, do the yeah. investigation. I like yeah. getting the evidence. Yeah. But then I like to yeah. leave, you know, I'm like, I don't want to yeah. stay. And if it's in my house, yeah. I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. I'm good. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sleeping with and, a fucking uh, demon. Sorry. Yeah. Right. And, uh, so my last oh, I, I swear I would slip off. <laughs> no, well, we, remember you can swear on my podcast. Oh, okay. uh, you can do anything you want. Um, so my last episode, which unfortunately Aaron could not join me for, which I'm bummed. No. But that's okay. We'll bring him back. A David yes. Omen from the Omen House. That the episode came out uh, um, Sunday. Uh, uh, who knows when this will drop? But it came out late August. Uh, hopefully, I'll bring him back. Uh, yes, yeah. That time, I really but want to. Yeah. Again, he this his house has been called the Mount Everest of paranormal activity. That's crazy. Like, oh my yeah. god! I just got the chills when you said that. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's easy. Yeah. Um. Anyway, uh, go and check out that episode. Hopefully, like, yeah. I can't it. wait to see that, and I really want to meet him and and hear his story. Yeah. That's so crazy. Like, yeah. how could you live in that? We'll figure it out. We will. Yeah. We will figure out. It's a great story. I promise you. I will take that. But let's get to our main story. We've been having okay. a lot of fun. But this is. It's not going to be a ghost or something. This is going to be a little bit of a mystery, okay, Ooh. about how this can happen. Yeah. This is not fairly common, uh, but I thought it's something that I really wanted to cover, and Erin yeah. was cool, let's do that, and she was on board with it. So mm -hmm. tonight, we are going to talk about spontaneous human combustion. And oh. if you don't know what that is, I will talk about it because it's yes. crazy. And I'm going to give you guys a little bit of history. And then uh, Aaron obviously will chime in with questions mm -hmm. or uh, they, uh, anything she has found from her research. And then we're going to talk about some real life cases that mm. blows your mind. Like this is yeah. really hard. This is not a made up conspiracy. No. Weird shit. No, this really happened. So let's get right into a little bit of the history. Why don't we, okay, Aaron? Yeah, go for it. Yeah. Cool. So for well over a century, some have mm -hmm. claimed that people can suddenly 
and inexplicably explode into a ball of fire. The phenomenon is called spontaneous human combustion, and it has been described by yeah. many popular books of the mysteries and unexplained. So, though the term spontaneous human combustion is a fairly recent vintage, mm. is what they said, it was a rare but real concern to many people in the 1800s. Yeah. Now, this is insane to me. There are nearly a dozen references to people bursting into flames just out of nowhere. <laughs> and people, I'm not talking they're next That's to so their, their fire. I'm not talking they're next right. to their boiler. I'm not saying they're right. next to a fire. I'm just talking, you're just walking, you're just in your house having a sandwich and boom, you just turn into fire. And this is in pre 1900s. Yeah. So, like in the 1800s, people were. Aaron, people were legitimately concerned that they would burst into flame. And the most Yeah. Wouldn't you be? Like, if your neighbor just, like, burst into flames and then just died, like, wouldn't you be, like, freaking out? I'm not laughing at that. No, I know what you're saying. It's just like, hey, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Um, like, but the most famous yeah. example is Charles Dickens. Yes, that Charles Dickens. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. 1853 novel, A Bleak House. So he wrote, I've yeah. never heard of this novel, but then I don't read a lot of Charles Dickens, in which mm-hmm. a character loads into fire, though the phenomenon. Uh, so he, he already talks about this in his one of his novels, Charles Dickens, where he, a yeah. character actually loads into fire. And though the phenomenon can also be found in the works of Mark Twain, Herman Melville, Washington Irving, and others. So a lot of famous authors from the 1800s, 1900s, put that in their book. That people yeah. Just, okay. Now, in modern time, this phenomenon, uh, spontaneous human combustion, has appeared in movies. And television shows, mm-hmm. including the X Files. You ever seen the yeah. X Files? There is yep. an episode in there where this guy would just the people are just bursting into flames for no reason, and they were trying to figure it out. And then, if you're a comic book geek like I am, Johnny Storm, the Human Torch, in the font in the Fantastic Four comic book, he could just do it and shut it off. But this is we're not talking about right. comic books. We're actually talking about this is. Right, like, it is, by the way, a real thing. This has not stopped. And when I get into the stories, yeah. um, you'll be like, Really? So, yeah. anything to add before we get into some of the theories here, Aaron? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Is I do have quite a few theories, but so, so I read obviously some of the research that you, you did and sent me, and I read a lot of the stories, and I mean, they're pretty freaky. It's that would scare the living daylights out of you, especially in the 1800s where you don't have the information highway that we do today, you know, and, and right. you're like, oh, Johnny from two towns over burst in flames and like died. Yeah. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. But uh-huh. nowadays, like there is a lot that they're able to disprove or mm-hmm. say, I don't, I don't know, you know, with all the modern science, you know, they still don't have a lot of answers, but some of those yeah. stories were just like, my God, that, that made no sense. Like, how can you possibly, because, you know, fires will put themselves out if they don't get fed, right. you know? And so yeah. it's like, you know, a lot of the circumstances that I read from what you had shared, it was just like, how is that even possible? Like, and yeah. then the only yeah. they burned internally, which of course we can get Correct. into a lot of theories, but it's like, yes. that seems, yes. that's scary. Yeah, and it makes me think, like, should I be drinking my cold brew coffee? Is that going to make my stomach like... Careful. Then you see my vape, I'm like, oh my god, is this the combination that causes you to combust? Yes, if you smoke out there and do certain things, be careful. Yeah, don't vape, children. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, here's the thing. Let's get into some theories, all right? So, like you said, Fires don't typically start on their own. It's not like, you know, one day you're in your house and you're eating, uh, right. watching TV and 
eating a pizza and all of a sudden, boom! Like, you know, no. It doesn't, doesn't happen that way, right? It's so awful. Uh, so, John is actually, you don't know that. You don't know that that did yeah, not happen yeah, to yeah, somebody. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's true. That's true. We'll get into that. Which is kind of funny, actually. And this is the dark humor dark, John was talking about dark earlier, dark y'all. Humor, right? Okay. This is like dark humor. Yeah, uh, we're not so looking at people that have spontaneously no, combust, not, okay? No, no. making fun of those people no, at all. But but it, it is wild. So real, like, right, it's yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. Uh, so when investigators search like for a cause of like forest fires, they don't assume right. that a flame ignited itself. Like some idiot tossed a cigarette right. or tossed right. a match or didn't put out their campfire. Mm-hmm. Or mm-hmm. play with fireworks, right? right. It's a number of things. So it's like normally a careless tamper, or maybe a lightning strike caused it. So it could be right. natural or you know mm-hmm. unnatural, whatever. But it usually, when however, when many things can self ignite without explosion <laughs> flames under the right circumstances. So yeah, there are things like coal dust, piles of compost, used oily rags. Um, even things like grain, like in those big grain yeah. uh, elevators yeah. and stuff, yeah, those can ex- just the dust and stuff. If the, yes. the right combination, can just yeah, boom, mm-hmm. it just fall. So yeah. it's not like it doesn't happen; it can't happen. But again, right. if you put up oily rags, you're working on your car, right? And you keep on the piling oily rags, hey, that's going to be a problem. If you have right. a bunch of compost in your backyard and you're not doing what you're supposed to do with it yeah right. that can explode uh coal dust we know is exploding because being in a coal miner is just mm. as we know numerous stories yeah. it's a terrible job and very mm-hmm. exciting. but yeah. there's a whole different matter to claim that people can suddenly burst into flames for no apparent reason right there's no so there's no doubt that bodies can burn we already know that Crematoriums, crematoriums you know, obviously take our bodies to right. ashes. Um, and, right. But they do it over a course of a few hours. Um, mm. And in here, with spontaneous human combustion, mm. it, it might happen in a matter of minutes. Like, just, everything just burns. And, right. and typically, the story goes, there is no obvious sort sources of ignition. No open right. fires nearby that might set the person aflame. Furthermore, the victims are killed and not, for example, only partly burned on one arm or a leg. Right. Spontaneous fusion combustion is fatal. So if you've known people who have unfortunately been burned in a fire, who have mm-hmm. maybe done something, had an accident, uh, and burned half their body and stuff like that, right. which is horrible. But you kind of, you can... You can go on living, right? It's not a great life, right. but you can go on living and you make the best of it. Um, <laughs> but not spontaneous human combustion. Every time it happens, it's fatal. There's nobody right. supposedly who has survived except one that I read who did really? survive. Doesn't make sense that this person survived. Mm. Um, and I didn't really include it in here because the guy sounded like he was kind of a wacky kind of guy okay like um i don't think you right. survive that because 99.999 percent of the cases it's spontaneous right. combustion is fatal right. so how did he survive i don't know he claims he did um yeah he just it, fire and he like put it out and i'm thinking hmm. you, like maybe maybe yeah something? maybe he right? was was he drinking and like he had the alcohol yeah, in his right? belly yeah. and then it was yeah. like, yeah. you know, I mean, I, I don't know. See, I don't know. Yeah. And the, yeah. So I don't know. Is there, did you, or you want to tell more or yeah, do you yeah. want to talk about I, theories? The thing, okay. This is one of the things too. I want to, I want to talk about too, is like how people can tell. <laughs> now this is scary. Oh, stuff. So this, when you yeah. hear that, don't freak out. People, please don't freak out and go, oh, my God. Um, so uh, some, okay. people claim, some people claim that the burning often seems to begin in the chest or stomach area. Mm-hmm. Okay. So a lot of people will say, like, they're 
their stomach or their chest is on fire. Now that could be a million right. other things, people. That could be, yeah. Unfortunately, that could be a sign of maybe you're having a stroke. Uh, maybe there's some type of um, infection. Maybe, you know, there's, mm-hmm. there's a lot of things you should mm-hmm. get to the hospital. If, if something's going on where you feel like your stomach or your chest area is like burning, like it's on fire, you should immediately call 911, get to a hospital and figure that out. But usually yeah. for people, people say it starts. Also, it yes. starts too in your hands and your legs where you start to feel like, Again, somebody is burning you alive. It's like your 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 like your sure. uh, inner body's like it's kind of like when you start up your grill. You have a gas grill, right? If right, you have a gas right. Grill and you start up your gas grill and it's heating. That's what it kind of feels like. It, it's like you're preheating your body, almost like an oven right. or a grill, and, and it just starts burning and burning and burning to a certain point. Well, we'll get into what happens, but you had a question. No, I was just curious. So that is what people say they feel, you know? That, that's what people say they feel or have felt. Okay. Um, but they obviously yes. didn't combust, but yeah, yeah. they went so to the hospital. I, I and, okay. Yeah. So I'm yeah. like, is that truly... Uh, you know what I mean? That's what I was saying with the guy with the well, uh, who survived. But then again, maybe right. there's something going on because it didn't give time date. It didn't give like, yeah. like this is 1800s, 1900s. But okay, maybe that guy was right. Maybe hmm. maybe he did, you know, survive. Yeah, like, what could have stopped it? Right? You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't know. It, right? Unless they got to the hospital in time and the <laughs> hospital thought it was something else. And yeah. gave them something and stopped it. I don't. I don't know. I, well, I don't know. see, now then, that's kind of where you get into a little bit of the theories because I have yeah. a couple theories of why that yeah, that yeah. that could be possible. I mean, but yeah. I don't know if you were ready to go into theories yet, or you wanted to talk a little bit more about you know yeah, more cases well, or no, something. No, we, let's go in a little bit of the theories in, in that too, because like okay. I said, it's. Uh, it's interesting. It's just really It is. How- so I wanted to read this for you. I've been looking over here at this because I found this yeah. when, when you had said that this is what we were going to talk about. I wanted to look into it a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I know as a child, I was kind of fascinated with this subject. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know. I, I've always been weird, people. You know, it's just mm-hmm. it's just a thing for me. But I was always like... I heard these stories and like yours and I would see these pictures like you know legs and feet sitting there and everything else was burned and I'm like oh my god Mm -hmm. what the hell and so it kind of scared me a little bit as a child but I was fascinated with it and so it's so funny when you said we're going to talk about this because I was like oh my god weirdo over here I actually really like this subject um but so on this that I found which I found really weird because I, I didn't really I definitely didn't know about this, but it says here, several things must occur for the human body to burn to ashes, okay? Mm -hmm. And it says the NIH, which is not a fan of mine, but they said that the burn victim has to die. Sorry, I'm not a fan of them, I meant. But the burn victim has to die for the body fat to begin melting. Mm -hmm. My God. So like you said, nobody survives, right? Nobody's been able to survive. So. So for in order for the body fat to begin melting, they have to die. Okay. Mm -hmm. So a tear in the skin must occur for the melted fat to soak the burned clothes, igniting an effect Mm -hmm. that produces heat for an extended period of time. That's awful. And that goes back to what you were saying that, you know, it's, it's something that occurs that, you know, it takes hours. It's not like it just, is like two seconds yeah. and then they're like you know what i mean yeah right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so that's a disgusting oh. and b it's, it's terrifying that's terrifying mm-hmm. you know but that's you could terrifying. see so so that gives questions it says that the burn victim has to die for the, the body fat to begin melting okay mm-hmm. i didn't know that because because when mm-hmm. a person does burn but they're not dead and they do survive mm-hmm. don't they have a lot of stuff that's burnt you know including fat right. yeah 
Yeah, so I have questions. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, let, let's answer that. This is this is a good okay. point for me to go to. So, okay, what about the source of ignition? Right, like what what's mm -hmm. going on? What could possibly cause people to suddenly burst into flame? Well, this is yes. You can start with the first thing. This is hilarious. About a century ago, it was blamed oh, on intemperance and God's wrath. <laughs> so most yeah. victims were assumed to be drunkards who had saturated their self alcohol. So basically, if you burst, well, God, bam, gotcha. You know, because you're a drunk and like, come on, mm. people, all right. Half the world would be. And then the 1800s was kind of that way too. If that happened mm. to you, you were considered maybe a harlot. You were considered maybe yeah. evil. You were considered mm -hmm. something, right? Um, I can see where they would say that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now eventually you get, and, and you know, the Mark Twain and all these other people put it in their books. Mm -hmm. it's, it's obviously fiction. They're making it up. Right. It, but that's where they would put in their stories. So it, it's yeah. not like, yeah, they witnessed that happening. It's just, right. uh, it's just them being creative. But in yeah. the 1970s, a quasi-Freudian explanation came into vogue, suggesting that a person's depressive, oh boy, emotional states could somehow cause his or him or her to become inflamed. So they said no, you were shit. depressed. Others, right? That's not good. This is crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. And this is 1970, so it's not that far away. No, I've suggested yeah. that. Sunspots, cosmic storms, gas producing intestinal <laughs> intestinal bacteria, or the, even the build up of the body's supposed vibrational energy may mm. also be to blame for all this to happen. So in the seventies, people were like, "Hey, man, you're not in tune with yeah. the universe. You're gonna go on the flame." That's right. Hey, there's there's a sun thing going on. There's a right. cosmic ray. Yeah. Okay. So as you see, as you see here, Aaron and my spooky friends is like, nobody yeah. was for a while taking this series. Everybody was right. like saying, okay, whatever. But oh, go ahead. Yeah. No, I was just going to say as well, though, you know, as people tend to do when there's fear involved because that would be a very scary thing and say that that happened mm -hmm. four times in the 70s the early 70s and it was all over the national news you're going to create yeah. fear and so yeah. in order to wrap your mind around something that's so unexplainable some people will mm -hmm. come up with whatever no matter how ridiculous yeah. it is you know i mean i do it to myself sometimes too oh, you know yeah. that's that's not gonna happen and that's so crazy yeah. you know and, uh, and so you you yeah. rationalize Mm -hmm. stuff to get an explanation like even like for instance when I was grow out at that time it's like you try to find an explanation because you cannot explain it and it's scary so it I could see why some people would make that however I mean that is that, that's pretty far out there some of it you know yeah exactly now here's yeah. something that will blow your mind Aaron and again my spooky friends so our bodies are almost 60 to 70 percent percent non-flammable because they're made of water so we're mostly mm. made of water so it's non-flammable yeah. and the simple fact that there is no physical or medical mechanism by which right. a person could possibly self combust yeah. and that okay. is true they have studied this and i'll get into it yeah. here okay. the, we're mostly water so but, how the hell is this even possible? It's true. And that's why if you don't drink water, like eventually you will peg it. You know, I mean, you have to have water. Yeah. Your body has to have water. Have so then this is going to get into those theories a little bit. Okay. Because mm -hmm. you, you, you've you said that and I, I agree. However, think, I think, and this is just an opinion. So I have no idea. This is not scientific or medical. I have no idea. I just you know, from like personal experiences and then seeing other people with mm -hmm. diet, with what we're consuming, medications, I mean, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. I think yeah. we can create inside yeah. of us stuff yeah. that is not healthy and mm -hmm. can possibly be a combination sure. that could be sure. 
very dangerous. Yeah. And, you know, you just don't know. Um, no. I will tell you this, though, because I have a, a disease called SIBO. And I I don't know if any of your listeners know what that is, but it's small. God, I've gone blank. I'm like, I have it. I have it. And I don't even know what it is. It's small, something bacterial overgrowth. Good, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. My God, my brain's like, Bleh. so that is in itself, it's, it's a nasty stomach mm-hmm. disease. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, if I'm not taking care of myself and I'm eating all the wrong things, now I am not allergic to dairy and I'm not allergic to gluten. However, when I eat dairy and gluten, it mm-hmm. with my stomach, the SIBO, it starts producing all those bacterial overgrowth. And then I get really sick. Mm-hmm. The first sign when this happens, when I know that I'm eating stuff I shouldn't be eating and then I start to feel sick from this right. is my breath. It's like releasing gas. Swear to God, it's awful. And it's it's okay. a, a type of methane. And, and then yeah. it's a type of, there's two, a hydrogen. And they release mm. from my stomach because of this bacterial overgrowth just going berserk. Mm. Eating stuff that causes this, you know. Now, I've, I've just started reading the book to hopefully, he claims that it cures it if you eat this right stuff. So I'm going to try it because okay. you make your own yogurt. It's called SIBO yogurt. So I'm going to give it a go. Um, okay. Yeah, we'll try it. See if it works because it does suck okay. really yeah. bad. Um, sorry, my kid just came in scared the living shit out of me because all I saw was his face. <laughs> I just see his face. I was like, he gave me a fist bump. I'm like, oh my god, that cute, but not funny. That don't don't make me jump like that. Like, I don't have any firearms on me right now, but that ain't a good thing. To... <laughs> Anyways, yeah. So so this bacterial overgrowth when it starts happening, it mm-hmm. gets very nasty, and then my stomach. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just and so I pose to you or your audience and and you guys, you know, tell me because I'm sure there's other people that have SIBO that suffer like I do if you're eating the wrong things. But again, this stuff comes out of my breath. So like during the whole mask thing, okay, you you obviously know I'm 100% against all that bullshit. I won't do it. But I cannot physically do it because if I put that on and I'm breathing in the stuff from my stomach, I get extremely sick, right? Mm. So I wonder, you know what I mean? What I'm describing to you is under the right circumstances. And then I'm drinking, smoking, and my stomach's doing that. What if, you know what I'm saying? So there's a theory I'm just throwing out there. Yeah, Because that that would be terrifying, right? I love it. You know, that's really interesting to me. Now, people have said too, Aaron, like, (laughs) wait a minute. If we're mostly water, okay, and we still can burst into flames... Why then has no one burst into flames when they're in their bathtub or scuba diving or swimming? <laughs> right. Which, but how I'm do like, we know they haven't? Yeah. Why? Why? Okay. Because you know, like there, are, there are things that still burn with water, like oil. Right. I mean, how much right. oil fire? I mean, you know. So I'm like, okay, but no one. There's been no cases they have found out nothing at all uh, that someone was in their swimming pool and burst in the flames and right. so it, it's really so we, we see here a lot of scientists are still not convinced on um, mm. cases and are still not convinced what is the perfect formula what is the perfect right. scenario what is you know the right. perfect storm right we, we like to use that as a cliche, like the perfect storm, like yeah, oh, this happened, that happened, all happened at the same time and made my day mm-hmm. miserable, right? Whatever that was. Right. And you're like, I and it usually doesn't happen again. It's the perfect storm. So there was there are some researchers here who have looked into us. Not a lot because it's not considered right. the top, you know, thing to look into, which is fine. I, I understand yeah. that. I mean, yeah. Because uh, it's usually there's only been about a little over a dozen claimed cases of this in real Thank life. God. It's not like a lot, but it's still, if one person dies from this, you're like, holy shit. Maybe right. should look into this because who knows yeah. how it spreads. But So, researcher Joe Nickel examined many unexplainable <gasps> cases in his book, Real Life X-Files. 
So I got to get this book. Ooh, that sounds good. Yeah, so, yeah, so he's, I was reading the excerpt of it, and he's, so he's, like, found all these strange events like they had in the X-Files show, which mm-hmm. is, in my opinion, mm-hmm. is a great show. Uh, and he's come to, like, you And know, a lot of truth. Like, yeah, yeah. Just, just saying. <laughs> and then all of them, some of them, and I should say, were less mysterious than often suggested. So this right. is what he's found out. Right. This is what he found out. Most of the victims were elderly, alone, mm. and near flames. Mm. Often cigarettes, vapes. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Candles. <laughs> <laughs> And open fires when they die. Mm. Several of these older people were last seen drinking alcohol and smoking. Okay, so you're see? Like, okay, all right. Mm-hmm. But if yeah. the person is asleep, intoxicated, unconscious, infirm, meaning they can't move or whatever, or right. otherwise unable to move or put the flame out, the right. victim's clothes can act as a wick because, you know, we're just made out of all this shit we're wearing is flammable, whether you believe it or not. Uh, right. Most people spend, this is, I think it's hilarious, most of their time wrapped in flammable clothing. If you don't believe yep. me, just go and be near a campfire, not pay attention, yep. and let your shirt go up like, a, a, you know, yeah. a flame because you yeah. know, polyester, cotton blend. Yeah. The, and then what happens is the flames draw on the body's fat and mm-hmm. on your skin surface, combined with the burning clothing, to fuel the fire. Yeah. So yeah. So you can yep. go to yourself. Okay, that happens. But here's the thing: a lot of these cases, which I'll get to, is a fire spreads. Right? It starts to spread. So if you're yeah. if you're if you're in your okay. apartment. And you, your clothes start on fire. The right. The furniture you're sitting in will probably start on fire. Then the furniture then will spread that, you know, if not okay. a little bit, right? right. But what they have found with people is it's totally centered right. on that person. Right. And they okay. found so... where, and we'll get into some of the stories here really quick, but they found yeah. where the, the body's ashes, but like, the hands, like mm-hmm. your wrist, mm-hmm. and your, like will survive, or your feet guess, yeah. will survive, and there's yeah. no flames going anywhere else. And the chair and stuff that you sit in, yes, it's damaged, but it's not on fire. It didn't. So but why, that's, why is that? Yeah, that's why. Okay, that's. I wanted to just add this in there because this is why I think the. A lot of these stories are related when it comes to the alcohol. And mm-hmm. if you, like you were saying earlier, if you put, you know, something in a water that can burn, but mm-hmm. eventually, it, not always, but eventually it extinguishes, right? Because yeah. it runs out of oxygen or whatever it needs to continue. If that's mm-hmm. the case with these spontaneous combustions, they had the right ingredient because fortunately yeah. it takes like you said, the perfect storm to have all the right exact ingredients yeah. for this to occur. Thank God. Yeah. You know, especially if they're drinking alcohol, right? And they're putting, yeah. that, that's a flammable yeah. thing. I mean, extremely mm-hmm. flammable, right? You yeah. know, you, the kids doing the fireball with the flame, you know, when they're younger yeah. because they think it's yeah. cool and then they all get on fire. Mm-hmm. And yeah. So, yeah, it so says don't do that, children. But, you know, what if you've got that in your stomach and it's just, you know, and then you've got right. the right circumstances for that to just, and like this article, remember I just read that where it says, mm-hmm. you know, that they die, but they have to have a tear in the skin. So what if, because of mm. the circumstance in their stomach and, and it just cannot contain and it combusts and then the alcohol, they had a cigarette or whatever, and it's like, poof, and mm-hmm. only right there burns because then that alcohol burns mm-hmm. off or whatever. And yeah. then it stops because it doesn't have enough oxygen in the room to continue to yeah. ignite. And so it, they're only mm-hmm. left with those body parts. And that's really horrible. And I'm not right. laughing at that. It's just that it's like, right, right, right. holy shit, that's terrifying. I thank God I don't drink. But you know what I'm saying? Like that could yeah. be the perfect storm of, of yeah. that creation. Right. 
Now, you know who yeah. we do have to have on eventually and revisit this subject is mm. from A Crime to Burn. Have you seen her podcast? Because she's a fire expert. No, I haven't. Oh my God, you have to go yeah. follow her. She's awesome. And that's all she talks about is fire crimes and, uh, you know, the, oh, the people sure. behind it in the circumstances. It's so interesting. So you guys go give her a follow. It's called Crime to Burn. She to burn. used to be, and I don't, I don't want to get her title wrong. She's an amazing woman, but I think she was a fire expert or something. Sorry, sweetie. Okay. But anyways... <laughs> Yeah, I know. I'm like, I can't remember her title, but but she's so cool. She's so amazing. And you need to go give her a follow. But we've got to have her on sometime and do this yeah. subject again because it's so fascinating. I but will. she'd probably have some really good insight into that. Yeah, because yeah, definitely. I'm do you see what I'm saying, though, stuff. about the stomach and the combustion I and the maybe totally it exploded did. and then it I caused totally the fireball? Did. And yeah, so that would be a perfect yeah, storm I mean, of situation. Yeah, right? Now... To make this even weirder, and hopefully oh, none of you can this have get weirder. This, there is a rare medical condition called Steven Johnson's syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right? I know about that, that too. In extreme cases mm -hmm. may be mistaken for a case of aborted spontaneous combustion. The skin disease, which can be treated mm -hmm. by a toxic reaction to yep. medications. Yeah. There we go, Aaron. Medications, I know. including antibiotics and prescription mm -hmm. painkillers, causes the appearance of severe burns yep. and blisters and mm -hmm. can be fatal. Yeah. So, just like you mm -hmm. were saying, you, maybe you're mixing medications for whatever, yeah. and we don't know what you're mixing. Right. This could be like, here you go, and it mm -hmm. is fatal. It can be mistaken yeah. for spontaneous human combustion. Now, yeah. it does not say in here that you go up in flames. It just says no. you have severe burns and blisters. Mm -hmm. so it looks like you like stuck your arm in a fire. Okay, you know so I mean? like literally, yeah. And I don't know how do you? I, I do know, know on this subject I, because I also have Stephen oh, Johnson syndrome. I love it. I know my body's just a fucking temple, right? Okay, so. <laughs> So I have Stevens Johnson syndrome. I can't take sulfa. If I take sulfa, exactly what you're saying occurs. The thankfully I've only had sulfa twice in my life, thank God, because it sucks. Yeah. And thankfully we were able to catch it almost immediately and get the oh, proper okay. medications to stop it. But let me tell you what does happen because this does correlate okay. to what we're talking about of maybe yeah, that yeah. is a possibility. Because the first thing that happens is actually you do feel like you're burning. It hurts. It's so painful. You feel like you're on fire. You swell and you turn red and you realize something's really, really wrong. And then you get blisters and they start off as this just like a blister. And then all of a sudden they turn really purple and it's Ooh. very painful. And then your skin right. starts literally melting off. <laughs> It's awful. Like the last time my skin from about here all the way down to my hands and then from about my ankles Ooh. all the way down to my feet peeled off. And so you're like literally left with raw skin like you've been burnt. Ooh. Yeah. And but luckily, like I said, we caught it and we started getting the, the stuff in to counteract and so it stopped here but it can your whole entire body can do that and then then you're talking mm -hmm. about potentially fatal because of infection yeah. and so when i yeah when i got i had to take all kinds of precautions to not get infection because i had no skin on my hands and my feet and so it was oh, awful oh, and so that does tie into exactly what you're saying that could very mm -hmm. much be a possibility of somebody having a reaction and they're not knowing or understanding. And then what if you introduce yeah, right. something horrible, like they don't know that that's going on. And then the flames or I, you know, who knows? My God, that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> so, that so I just wanted to tell you that because yeah, thank you. yes, that completely, I could see that, you know, mm. of, of the burning thing. That's yeah. Crazy. Um, so, yeah, so again, you know, just get yourself checked out. If something's not right, make sure you go to a doctor. 
<laughs> yeah, well, if you start you know. burning and uh, your skin starts yeah, yeah, melting yeah, off, yeah. I'd say go to the hospital. Yeah, yeah I went to the hospital last yeah, time. Yeah, it was, it was not fun. But uh, thankfully, I didn't spontaneously combust. But, uh, yes. you know, but can you imagine, though, if, if like, in in the you know like the 70s like you're saying they're just kind of learning about a lot of these medicines and then somebody's yeah. sitting there having a stevens johnson reaction and then they don't yeah. know and they're like they're they're melting yeah. you know they're on fire like yeah, what's yeah. wrong with them and they're dead but yeah but yeah, yeah. if you and then if you don't go to the hospital oh. and you start adding all kinds of alcohol and pills and all that shit maybe you really will freaking combust right. you know yeah so here's the thing that maybe is not Maybe I'm just thinking something strange here, which is normal for me. But why wouldn't more, why wouldn't more like addicts just mm. burst into flames? I mean, like real life addicts, like hardcore addicts yeah. who take hot pills, who drink, mm-hmm. who just spend most of their life doing this. Small right. Team. That's a good sure question. They die of other things. Yeah, they die right. of other things, right? That's um, a really good question. But you think. Well, it- people- Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah yeah and maybe uh, you really do need that perfect storm to come yeah, together for right? that to create that exact scenario and maybe thankfully yeah. it's very very rare mm-hmm. and, well maybe this will scare people maybe this will scare people to stop drinking and popping yeah, out. Yeah, I don't know. Out. Yeah, well, yeah you know we can help so one of the right. things is like, oh my God. Here's, here's the good news, people. Yes, this is incredibly rare. Mm-hmm. And yes, there's not a lot of cases. Thank Some God, people yeah. have asked, why doesn't animals, why why don't animals suffer from this, right? And I'm they're like, well, they're not drinking alcohol. I don't know. Yeah, they're not drinking alcohol. And they're not, uh, you know, come on. Taking people, pills. Let's, let's <laughs> And then a lot of people have said, well, with everyone having a camera on their phone mm-hmm. and their surveillance, mm-hmm. why don't we see this more often? Why don't we see yeah. this happen? And I'm like, again, it's rare people. Always think about it. It, it, it really, if it, it, it was something, could you imagine a bar? Could you imagine being in a bar and all of a sudden uh, people just start bursting and playing oh my God, right yeah. around you? Yeah. Holy shit. And- yeah, so thankfully it is rare. But, you know, back to the animal thing, though. But how do you know that that hasn't happened? And they just, sure. we haven't, A, heard about it, or B, they, they haven't reported it, or they cover it up. I mean, yeah. and maybe yeah, right? it does happen a little more than we know. And there's, a, you yeah. know, and especially yeah. if it, if you know, because on here, this whole article that I was reading, you know, they said that the first known case of spontaneous human combustion happened in the late 14th century in Italy. When a knight yeah. drank wine, uh huh, okay, one night before bursting into flames. So, again, alcohol was involved. But that was in the 14th century. So, you know, a lot of stuff wasn't reported or, you know, made it to news or written down or the articles were lost. So, maybe it did happen more than we know, you know, who knows? Mm-hmm. But, uh, could be. Could be. Well, but yeah, I do so find right. fascinating that most of these cases do involve alcohol and a cigarette. Correct. Correct. You know. Correct. So let good segue. So let's get into these cases, and some okay. are fairly recent, very recent. Yes. So, like in 2011, a coroner, a coroner concluded that Michael Faraday, an elderly mm-hmm. Irishman living alone, burned yep. to death in his home in December 20. 20- 10 yep, uh right they here. spontaneously combusted though so mm-hmm. his body was found a few feet from an open burning fireplace the coroner right. decided that it was not the fire that set him uh, ablaze so hmm. okay hmm. you know what are you gonna do uh right here's the other one this is the famous this is a famous one uh if you've heard about spontaneous human combustion or look into it um, this one happened on July second, nineteen fifty one. Mary uh, Rissar, Reeser, uh, she was uh-huh. a sixty a sixty seven year old woman, and she was found yep. burned to death in her house after yeah. her landlady realized that this is what freaking freaks me out that the doorknob to her house was, was worn. worn. 
Yes. So the landlady not notified the police, and upon right. entering the home, they found Reeser's remains completely burned into ash, with disintegrated. Only yeah, one leg remaining. The chair yeah. was she was sitting in mm. was also destroyed. Reeser right. took here we go sleeping pills and was also a smoker. I'm not laughing at her. During yeah, I know. Despite its pro proliferation into popular mm -hmm. culture, the contemporary FBI investigation ruled out spontaneous human combustion. A common theory was she was smoking a cigarette after taking yep. sleeping pills, fell yep. asleep, still holding the burning cigarette, which could have ignited, uh, you know, right. leading to her death. The cigarette right. dropped uh, to her lap. Her fat mm -hmm. was the fuel that kept her burning. The floor was cement. And the chair was by mm -hmm. itself. There was nothing around her to burn. Uh, yes. So, it, right, you know, you're kind of like, okay. Right. But that still is interesting to me that her leg survived. Okay. Well. That's scary and right. yuck. You see, and then that goes back to the whole thing of, um, you know, did it run out of oxygen? You know, what did it run out of right. fat? Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Those circumstances where yeah. it just couldn't produce any more flame and it, it then stops. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's uh, that's some interesting questions that, that yeah. I would like to so ask my friend. Here's here's another interesting one, too. So another older lady. Uh, so make sure your grandma's OK tonight. I'd give, them a, give her a call if you have a grandma. Oh, God. Especially if they you drink or smoke, man. Call. Give them a call. Uh, Margaret Hogan, 80. Nine-year-old widow who lived alone on Prussian Street in Ireland again I... was found burnt almost to the point of complete destruction on May March twenty eighth, nineteen seventy. Ah, oh, that's awful. Plastic flowers on a table in the center of the room had been reduced to liquid, and a television uh, was whose screen was melted that sat sat twelve feet from her armchair in which the ashen remains were found. Otherwise, the surroundings were almost untouched. Oh. Her two feet and both legs from below, the knees oh. were undamaged. A small yeah. coal fire had been burning in the grate when a neighbor left the house the previous day. However, no connection between this fire and which happened, in which Miss Hogan died, could be found. Oh, oh, yeah. So in, in oh, sorry. An inquest held on April 3, 1970, recorded the death by burning, mm. but the fire listed is unknown. So again, mm. all right, it's the legs they get. Now, in 1979, on right. the boy, during Thanksgiving weekend, oh, Beatrice nice. Azaki, a 51-year-old woman, so she's not that old, was found charred to death in her home in the village of uh, Bolingbrook, Illinois. Oh, wow. Again, she, and again, there was not much right. to say on this one. Kind of the same thing. Also, yeah. Henry Thomas, a 73-year-old man, was found burned to death in his living room of his council house in the Rosal Estate uh, in South Wales. Uh, most of his body was incinerated, leaving only his skull. So only his skull and, oh my God. That's awful. And part of each leg below the knee, the feet and legs were still clothed oh. in socks and trousers. Half of the uh, chair in which he had been sitting was also destroyed. Uh, These forensic yeah. officers decided that the incineration of Thomas was due to a, the mm. wick effect. Which you can look that up. Now, the last one is back in Ireland again mm -hmm. <laughs> in December of 2010. You know, that was, I already read that one. I'm sorry. But they were talking in this one too, a Michael Faraday one. I found some mm -hmm. interesting thing on that. Was they talked to the doctor and he, like I said, he investigated and stuff along with everybody. And the doctor made the statement in, into death. He says, the the fire was thoroughly investigated, and I'm left with the conclusion that this fits into the category of spontaneous human combustion, for which there is no adequate 
explanation. So the first story right. I talked about, uh, the doctor came in and said, I couldn't tell you. I don't right. think it was anything with there that it was spontaneous steam combustion. So those are some of the cases. And, and unfortunately, they're older people. Unfortunately, right. they're smokers, drinkers. They live right. alone. Uh, but again, it's so strange. Yeah. It, it's just like, again, parts of their body are left. Blech, gross. Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I honestly, I, I don't yeah. Know what to say on this. <laughs> no, it's wild. It's wild. But I, yeah. I do, I do think that it's perhaps just where it's run out of oxygen or, you know, and it just mm-hmm. cannot continue. But I mean, that's what a horrible, yeah. horrible way to, horrible way but, to go. but are, did they, or, you know what I mean? Because it seen, like I said mm-hmm. here, it says, you know, that the burn victim has to die for the body's fat to start melting. Mm-hmm. So in order to yeah. continue that fire, it's got to be able right. to burn all that stuff. You know, and uh, yeah, there's so many questions mm-hmm. just out of that one mm-hmm. sentence and everything that you've said. It's just like, but over and over again, my mind keeps going back to the fact that they were drinking, there was some alcohol or there yeah. was open flame or there were cigarettes, you know? So it's like, mm-hmm. there seems to be that connection throughout most of these cases, you know, and I, and I can't yeah. speak for all of them because I haven't read them all, but yeah for the ones that we've covered it, there seems to be you know that association so i'm wondering yeah. like if yeah that flammable stuff and then something yeah. horrible happened to them yeah it's because just, it's just crazy so one of the things i forgot to mention on one of the theories i'm gonna bring it up now because i was like should i bring this up or not what the hell i'll bring it up <laughs> So, Why not? In his, in his, this is actually in a book. In his 1976 book, Fire from Heaven, UK, UK writer Michael Harrison suggests that spontaneous human combustion is, wait for it, folks, poltergeist activity. He argues that the force which activates a poltergeist originates in and is supplied by a human being. And that was his thing. He thinks it's poltergeist. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what to add to that. Like, uh, as a paranormal know. investigator, no. Yeah, no. I'm not. I'm not going to go with your theory, dude. I'm sorry. But if yeah, if ghosts I, could I, run I, around I'm like, like things like, yeah, right. I don't want you yeah, here. Right? Yeah. I'm like. I think so, I would be blowed up. So is that even a word, blowed up? Yeah, right, right, right. So I think we both agree, Aaron, that this is a real life thing, that it can happen yeah. under the right circumstances. Is that I kind of where so. we're getting at? I think yeah. so. Yes. Yeah. I think that there's probably more of an explanation as we're talking about than definitely it's like some ghost. Yeah. like Because like if we had superpowers like that, I mean, come on now. Yeah, or if yeah. ghosts had superpowers yeah. like that, like that, yeah, that I definitely yeah. wouldn't ghost hunt. I can assure you. Yeah, so. absolutely. So, so as we see here, I, again, well, that's why it fascinates me about the paranormal. Yeah. We're not really sure. We know this exists because there's been right. real life cases, but right. we also know that no one really has the an answers. idea of what where right. it comes from, where it comes. Yeah, yeah. We have a bunch of theories and some other things. So, I mean, I yeah. could throw some so, wild yeah. shit out there if you want. You know, maybe it's <laughs> government with their laser rays, like pointing in at people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm joking. I'm, yeah. I'm messing with you. I, I don't know. So, it's this it's was, yeah, scary. I don't know. Right. This was another awesome show, uh, Aaron. Uh, thank yeah, you so I had much. so much fun as usual. I and always we, have fun we, with you. I, yeah, if we concluded we know what we don't know, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Heck yeah, but, we do. Yeah. I know so much less now. Now I'm like, I have more questions. We have more questions. So like Aaron said, we'll, we'll try to get an expert on the show. 
and we'll try yes. to co-host with her and see if we maybe can answer some questions. I don't know. That would be uh, amazing. We'll because, you know, yeah. she knows all about that. She knows about, you know, the burning. She knows about flames. She knows about the human body being burned because she covers all this yeah. stuff in her podcast. So we could be like, yo, April, like, we need some answers. Absolutely. Like, why are people just bursting into flames and only their legs bursting are left, you know? Yeah. Oh, man, that's crazy. So, Aaron, anything to tell our audience? Any updates on with Patriot Paranormal, uh, with your podcast, with something going yes. on, anything? I do. I do, actually, what? you guys. Yeah, I'm going to have to plug my little shit here for a minute, y'all. Yeah, yeah. we're just, uh, you know, the normal paranormal stuff. We have a, an investigation coming up next month. Well, we have one a month, you know. We're, we're, we're older, so we only do one a month, y'all. <laughs> and that's all we can handle, at least me. So, yeah, you can follow us on Patriot Paranormal on pretty much all the social medias. I'm not, I'm not active on X. I'm on there, but I'm not active. Um, I'm always banned on Facebook, so I'm not on there. Laura runs that. I, I no. Uh, Instagram, we're on there. That's my favorite place. That's where all my buddies are. Um, and then I have a podcast called Aaron's Supernatural Shenanigans, which we talk about the funnier side of the paranormal. So you know how like John and I are sitting here kind of goofing around a little bit, even though it's a serious yeah, subject, yeah. same thing. We know, yeah. we know, um, you know, the paranormal can be very serious. So my show is dedicated to the goofier stuff so that we can let our hair down. I don't have any hair, but we can let our hair down and relax and have fun and talk about the funnier stuff that goes on during investigations. You know, like when yeah. you scare yourself or your teammate accidentally and uh, or you get the 4 a.m. giggles, which we do all the time. We talk about kind of that the gentler side of the investigation. Yeah. So please come and join me. Come give me a follow. I'm mostly on Instagram because uh, I get banned everywhere else because I have a loud mouth mm -hmm. and I can't help it. So follow me on Instagram and my show will start back up. I don't have an exact date and only because there's just been so much to do. And it was, I will talk mm -hmm. about everything that happened. I will explain yeah. to my audience when I get there about everything that took place yep. and why I had to stop my previous podcast to start my own one all by myself um, with my amazing friends though, who are helping me out with a lot of stuff. And so, yeah, I can't wait to have you on my show. And um, I'm mostly going to do, I am going to do a couple of lives, but I'm mostly going to do pre-recorded. And I'm going to show it every Thursday at 7 p.m. And so I don't know exactly, but I will put the word out there. And, of course, John is so amazing and such a good friend. And so I know he'll show it with, with every all of you when that time comes. Absolutely. And I hope you support me and join me because, yeah, I don't, I don't really care where it goes. I just, you know, since finding yeah. podcasting, you were one of the first ones, John. Like, uh, actually, Thank I think you. you were the first one that had us on. It really yeah. got me into it because I found a way to express myself and yeah. found this group of friends, which I call my podcasting yes. family, that are Yay. just so amazing. I know because I, I felt yeah. quite quite alone with all this crazy stuff going on in the world. And then mm -hmm. so to have you guys to talk to yep. and uh, have yeah. just all this amazing support. And, and then I get to come yeah. on and be a goofball with you. Yes. Yay. Yes. And, and um, yeah, love, so thank you. Yeah. yeah, and like I was saying, sorry to interrupt, Aaron. No, uh, no, no, I'm good. I love having you on. I love you, sweetie. Please I love you. do not drink alcohol, Aaron. <laughs> do not smoke a cigarette. <laughs> do not sit next to open flame. Because I love you and I want to podcast with you and have you on and talk to you. So please don't do any of those things. Yeah, no. Okay? Actually, yeah, no, I have eight years sobriety, so I don't drink anyways. But if I did after this show, I'd be like, no, I'm good. Because uh, no, I don't want I, I don't to be on your show and be like, you yeah, this girl I used to know. First in flames. And she had, her. Yeah. She has Stevens Johnson. She knew better, you know, now. Yeah. Awesome. Well, God, again, thank, you. thank you so much. Love it. And we will talk again, folks. Um, yes. And, uh, you know, like I said, please check out Aaron's podcast yeah, on Instagram. Yeah. Subscribe, like, throw messages. That would be awesome. Okay. Yeah. And if you want to come on my show, but John's going to be on my show here yep. in the next couple of weeks. Absolutely. So, yay. You bet. Thank you, guys. You Stay spooky. I love you, John. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. Bye, honey. Bye-bye.
バイ。